roadway reconnecting London with the River Thames London relies on a 150-year-old sewer system built for a population less than half its current size. As a result, millions of tons of raw sewage spills, untreated, into the River Thames each year. That's where we come in. We're building a 25-kilometer super sewer under the Thames to intercept those nasty spills and clean up our river for the good of the city. It's wildlife and you dot tideways commitment on modern slavery. Modern slavery and human trafficking are atrocious forms of organized crime in which people are treated as commodities and exploited for criminal gain. Tideway is committed to improving our practices to combat modern slavery and human traffic. With effect from December 22nd, our registered office is changing to 6th floor, Bluefin Building, 110 Southwark Street, London, SE10SU. Growing underground in the heart of London there is a farm like no other. It's subterranean, sustainable and energy smart. It also has a digital twin looking out for its every need. 33 meters below London's Clapham High Street is the world's first underground farm. It's shaping the future of urban farming. Stacked racks of fresh green leaves thrive under banks of LED lights. Pea shoots, basil, coriander, parsley, salad rocket, pink radish, mustard plants. The fragrance of the microgreens filling a former World War II air raid shelter under South London. A post-war plan to join the tunnels to the London underground system never happened and in 2015, the deserted subterranean space sprouted new life when co-founders Richard Ballard and Steve Drink decided it was a perfect site to grow food while reducing the carbon footprint of transport and supply. Growing underground is a farm that feeds the city from within the city, explains Ballard. We sow, pack and grow on site, taking the harvest to New Covent Garden Market less than a mile away for distribution across the capital reducing food miles, pollution and food waste. Zero carbon food is at the core of the growing underground vision, which means paying close attention to what happens to the plants below ground as well as above ground down in the tunnel. A team of engineers and data specialists has been helping the farmers to optimize crop performance and reduce energy use. They are led by Dr. Ruchi Chaudhary from the Center for Smart Infrastructure and Construction at the University of Cambridge and the Data-Centric Engineering Program at the Alan Turing Institute. This can only happen if every element element of the farming process is carefully measured and tweaked and measured again. The plants on this farm get exactly what they need at every moment of every day thanks to the power of data and a digital twin looking out for its sibling from a laboratory in Cambridge like water, heat, data. Whenever we saw an opportunity to mash two potatoes with one fork, we did it. We want to be sustainable at every stage of the process. Optimizing crop performance for the energy we use seemed an obvious step forward. Says Ballard the collaboration with Cambridge has been hugely beneficial in this. Smart farming was a new area for us and we were one of the first people to do it in this way. So having Cambridge really pushing forward on the data side really sold us on the benefits of capturing and using information to solve some of the sustainability challenges we face. Marukador Waste Collection System Council and the Sunshine Coast are leading Australia in efficient waste collection. Council has installed Australia's first underground automated waste collection system, AWCS, PDF, 3.5 megabytes. In the new Marukador City Centre high-tech underground pipes transport waste out of the city center waste travels at up to 70 kmh through a 6.5 kilometer system of underground vacuum pipes removing waste from residential apartments commercial buildings public places the awcs is a more efficient alternative to conventional above ground waste collection the system will help create a cleaner healthier and more attractive city center recycling rates are also expected to improve the use of the awcs will result in a significant reduction in the number of large vehicles needing to access as the city center. This will provide a safer and more pleasant urban environment. It will also reduce the carbon footprint associated with this essential service. The elimination of early morning garbage collection also creates better urban living conditions. Tum Hyperloop What is Hyperloop? Hyperloop is an ultra-high-speed ground transportation system for passenger and cargo. Proposed as a concept by Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla and SpaceX. A couple of years ago, the Hyperloop system consists of a network of tubes connecting mobility hubs around the world, with pods traveling at ultra-high speeds in a vacuum. The low-pressure environment ensures energy-efficient operation thanks to low aerodynamic drag. Contactless magnetic levitation and propulsion systems enable a comfortable and silent passenger 
passenger experience. Hyperloop combines the key benefits of speed and flexibility, comfort and safety, as well as sustainability. Ultra high speeds contactless levitation and propulsion systems combined with a low pressure environment allow Hyperloop pods to travel efficiently at ultra high speeds. Direct city connections imagine a world where you can travel between cities in minutes. Hyperloop reduces door to door travel times by directly connecting mobility hubs emission free mobility with fully electric and energy efficient operation. The Hyperloop system aims at being climate neutral over the course of its life cycle. Tum Hyperloop successfully performed the first passenger ride under vacuum conditions on July 10, 2023. According to a planned procedure, the demonstrator's high performance pumps created a partial vacuum of 10 millibars inside the concrete tube, creating the ideal conditions for the first ride. Hovering and propulsion systems were activated and accelerated the manned vehicle through the test segment without contact in an almost airless space. The operations control center checked all the necessary parameters during the entire journey and carried out the certified test procedure. The two passengers were thus the first in Europe to get a first impression of the mobility solution of the future leader in developing Hyperloop technology. Tum Hyperloop is a research and development program based near Munich that develops the technology to make convenient and sustainable ultra-high speed transportation a reality. Currently, our team is designing and building Europe's first Hyperloop demonstrator and passenger side, a first segment. Drywall drainage system drywall is an important part of water system. Water is something we all need to survive. It gives us nourishment, hydration, and a cool place to be on a hot day. But too much of a good thing is no longer a good thing. No one wants a flooded yard. A drywall could be the perfect solution to draining problems that you may have in your yard. Consider one if you have water pooling in your yard because they are easy to build and are quickly effective. A drywall is an underground structure that gets rid of unwanted water by leading it to a new location. Drywalls are covered with porous wall. This type of system allows the water to percolate through the walls and leads it further underground. Dry wells are often built in basements, parking lots, and yards. They are powered by gravity and can be attached to more than one pipe or source. There isn't one exit either as the tiny porous holes are placed throughout the system. This allows for a slow and steady release that doesn't need much maintenance. Though a large reservoir or tank is often needed so that the water can always escape. When it rains, for example, the tank will fill fast if it doesn't drain fast enough. Most dry Dry wells are pits filled with gravel and debris. Because they are filled pits, there isn't a lot of reserved room for water. So more often than not, the pits are quite large. But another way around this is via a chamber. This chamber or tank can be buried under the ground with holes poked in it to create a porous wall. When you build a dry well like this, the water has more time and space to escape so it can handle more torrential weather because the wells are buried and the land is solid above them. You can build them almost anywhere. They won't be noticed nor take up land space. Here is a great way to build your own dry well in your yard. Make sure that the dry well is at least 10 feet from your house and at least three feet from the property line. This ensures that your home is safe and that you don't cause any problems with the neighbor. Subsurface irrigation Subsurface irrigation is regarded as advanced landscaping technology. It focuses on the correct utilization of water resources and even water distribution in the desired area for best results. Sprinkling or spraying water droplets denotes the three irrigation methods. Surface, sprinkler and drip slash micro that can initiate proper plant growth with the primary objective of landscape maintenance assisting agricultural crop growth while reducing the effect of inadequate rainfall. Today, the professionals of Eden App want to engage you with the subsurface irrigation method, its usage, application, functions, and advantages in order to render the right knowledge so that you choose an adequate irrigation method in the near future according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Sub-irrigation refers to irrigation below the surface, as by a periodic rise of the water table or by a system of underground porous pipes. The subsurface irrigation system is an irrigation device that comes with water water emitters and a delivery line installed below the soil surface to distribute water to soils directly from under the surface, which prevents airborne drift and minimizes runoff. There are two types of subsurface irrigation, natural subsurface irrigation and artificial subsurface irrigation. But first, let's figure out where the subsurface irrigation must be used. Subsurface irrigation is used almost on all crops or plants, especially in arid areas. When it comes to specific locations, windy, semi-arid, hot areas and sandy type soils are ideal. 
material for installing subsurface irrigation system. Well, for an effective irrigation process, you must allow at least 30 minutes or less for the soil to deeply saturate itself. Polyethylene drip tubes with built-in emitters operate to dribble water and distribute it uniform. The comprehensive layout and placement of this particular irrigation system explain the operation and maintenance in brief. Eden app, however, illustrates how to use it to render extensive knowledge on the process, especially for a newbie or novice landscaper. Subsurface irrigation uses one half inch, three, four flex tubing or pipe with the emitters placed into the pipe at the spacing from four to upwards of 24. However, the length of the spacing depends on the soil tension and soil type and depth of pipe on installation as well. The regulator valve that helps in reducing or increasing the pressure can be employed according to your desired pressure range. For effective filtering, a filter is installed before the fertigation system and after the pressure regulator to catch any particles with calcium deposits that can most probably clog up the system. For a newbie, it is important to understand that capillary action works the best in this particular irrigation method. When the power button is pressed and the valve is regulated, water is applied to soils directly under the surface through emitter.